Hey there, health advocates! Last time we discovered how stress affects our bodies and minds. Knowing how stress affects us is super helpful, but today I want to jump into an even more practical skill. Managing stress. When I was startled by that dog the other day, the acute stress response was stronger than I'd like to admit. But today, I feel much more relaxed than I was even before that incident, all thanks to a handful of stress management techniques that I put into practice. So today, I'll share what helped me out. By the end of today's lesson, you'll have three stress management techniques in your arsenal for whenever stress comes knocking in your own life. Are you ready? Let's get into it. As you recall, stress is a physical or mental response to an external cause, usually due to an unfamiliar or threatening situation. Stress can be acute, which is brief and intense, or chronic, which is long-lasting. After I had the scare with the dog, my heart rate and breathing had skyrocketed, and I was having trouble calming myself down. Let me teach you about a technique I use to help manage that stress during that moment. Sensory grounding is a mindfulness technique that helps you stay present and manage stress by using your five senses. This is a great practice to use when you're feeling overwhelmed or anxious like I was. We'll try it together. You can try the full practice or only try what resonates with you. Start by taking a deep breath and notice the space you're in. As we move through the practice, be aware of your breathing. Notice your surroundings. What are five things that you can see? Maybe you notice a mug, a notebook, or a pencil. Pause the video if you need a moment to look around. Next, take another deep breath and notice. What are four things that you can touch? It could be the fabric of your chair, the cool surface of a table, or the warmth of a sunbeam. Then notice and name three things that you can hear. This might be birds chirping, cars passing by, or the hum of a computer. After, identify two things you can smell. Maybe you notice the smell of a candle or food cooking in another room. If you can't immediately smell anything, think of your favorite scents. Finally, take another deep breath and identify one thing that you can taste. Perhaps you notice the mint of your toothpaste or the taste of your breakfast. Great work! As you go through each step, notice how your body starts to relax and your mind feels more grounded. This exercise brings your focus to the present, reducing the stress and anxiety caused by the past or future worries. Take a moment to reflect on how you feel now compared to before the exercise. Often grounding techniques like this can provide immediate relief from stress. I know that it helped me start to calm down when I was experiencing that acute stress response. Now let's discuss some techniques for addressing chronic stress. After I got home, I felt calmer, but I noticed that I was still a little shaken. It made me realize I've been feeling more stressed in general lately, which likely heightened my stress reaction earlier. So I decided to focus on something that I had not been prioritizing, self-care. Self-care is a vital part of managing stress, and I realized that I hadn't been caring as well for myself as I could have been. I took some time to practice some yoga, I made sure to make a really delicious dinner for myself, and I decided to go to bed a little earlier for some extra sleep. It's simple, but these small changes helped me relax a little bit more. In your notes, take a moment to write down a few ways that you can practice self-care. Pause the video for a moment to try it. Some examples that I came up with are to prioritize sleep, choose a healthy diet, spend at least 10 minutes outside every day, limit your caffeine intake, and find movement that you enjoy doing. Small steps can lead to big changes in how you manage stress. By incorporating these self-care techniques into your daily life, you're not just reducing stress, you're also improving your overall well-being. Taking care of yourself isn't selfish, it's necessary. And when you feel better, you can handle stress better. I've got a challenge for you. In the next week, 
Try to practice at least one of these self-care techniques. Maybe try some habit stacking to work self-care into your routine. I have a feeling that you'll see a difference in your overall well-being. It certainly helped me. But managing stress is also easier when we don't try to do it all by ourselves. Knowing when and how to ask for help is an important part of stress management. After reflecting on my own stress a little, I realized that I hadn't really been talking to my friends lately. So I texted a friend and scheduled some time to meet up and talk through what's been going on. After meeting up with them, I felt so much better. I was able to talk out all of my stressors and get some advice. Afterward, I felt lighter and more energized. We decided to make our chats a weekly plan and it's been a great way to catch up and get some support. Take a second to think about some people that you know. When you're feeling stressed, who can you ask for help? This might be a parent or guardian, a tutor, a mentor, a doctor, or any trusted adult in your life. It's important to have someone with whom you feel comfortable and safe discussing your feelings and challenges. If you worry excessively, so much so that you can't concentrate on your daily tasks, it might be time to ask for help from a trusted adult. Reaching out is not a weakness, but a sign of strength and self-awareness. When stress starts to feel overwhelming, remember it's okay not to have all the answers. By seeking support, you're taking a big step toward better managing your stress and improving your overall mental health. Well done today, health advocates. Let's wrap up what we've learned about managing stress. Remember, it's about grounding ourselves with our senses, practicing daily self-care, and asking for help when we need it. These tools are always in your mental health toolkit, so try them out whenever you start to feel stressed. Keep in mind, these are not the only ways to help with stress management. We've covered some basics today, but we encourage you to do some more research on stress management with a trusted adult. Until next time, I'm Caroline, and remember, dealing with stress is all about having the right tools and knowing when to use them. Each strategy we discussed today is a step toward mastering stress management. They're key to your journey in becoming a stronger, more resilient version of yourself. Stay positive, stay proactive, and I'll see you next time. Hey, hey.